Hello, take two. Hi, this is Al. I got a question from a follower relating to surround wettable powder. Surround WP, like you can see there. Um, they got some. They want to prepare to use it, and they had a set of questions about it. Now I'm going to open that email up so that I can see it on the screen. And the part one was... Starting applications at Petalfall, can products be mixed and sprayed at the same time in the same tank? Can he mix it with Immunox, Neem, Fish, whatever? Um, the first answer is, yes, you can mix it. However, do not mix it with oils. Okay. The reason you don't want to mix it with oils is the nature of Surround is an extremely fine powder. But if you mix it with oils... The, oil, the powder will con stick to the oils and get bigger than they were intended to be, and they will lose their effectiveness against repelling insects. The way they repel insects, acting as a barrier, is when the insect lands on that powdery surface, when it's all nice and loose, and it sticks to itself, fine, so the wind doesn't just blow it off, but when the insect lands on it and it starts to rub off onto the insect, it's going to open up the openings in the chitin shell of the, the bug, and they don't like that because it will desiccate them. So they start trying to clean it off. Well, after a while, they fatigue from that and they leave. So don't mix it with an oil. Don't mix it with neem oil. Um, you want to mix it, I would really say, with other things that are completely water-soluble, very water-soluble, um, you could mix it with um, Serenade, Serenade ASO. Yeah, that would be fine. Um, but anything that is going to cause it to congregate and lump, don't do that. Um, which kind of brings me on to my next thing. Surround as a wettable powder is a suspension. It is not a sol dilution or a solution. So if you have filters on your sprayer and on your nozzle, you got to take them out. And if you, uh, because they will clog. They'll drive you crazy because they will clog with the surround. Um, the other thing is, uh, I have a video in my materials and methods video. I'll try to remember to cite it below. You'll see that I modify, I use a solo wand on a Fimco sprayer. I use a solo wand because then I can use a T-Jet brand tip. And these are fixed aperture fan type tips. I don't like the little red ones, the spot tips that come with these sprayers. They're made for killing weeds, okay? They're not made for spraying trees. They're kind of lame. So I give them away. Um, I recommend you do that and you use one tip for your typical solution sprays. But when you're putting on surround, you want the, the shotgun, the big bore. So you're getting a consistent pattern out and it will not clog. That's a really big deal. Um, the, in mixing, I'm going to stop on this one too, in mixing, you add fluid to flour when you're baking, okay? Uh, the reason for that is powder will float on a fluid, okay? So if you pump, you just dump water, if you actually dump the surround into your tank on top of the water, it will not mix. It will float there and drive you crazy. What I recommend is you get a five-gallon utility bucket, like you get at a big box store or hardware store, and you get yourself for a drill gun the uh, a large paint mixer tool that goes on a drill gun for five-gallon buckets of paint. Okay, so they have like a metal ring on them, and they have flutes that come up onto the shaft. Um, the nice thing about the ring on the bottom is you can work around the bottom, and it's not going bang, 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 bang. It just runs around the bottom. You put your measured weight by label of surround into the bucket. Then you add slowly, add a quart at a time, add water, and start beating, mixing in the water into the surround. Slowly add water, slowly keep mixing, and eventually you're going to come up with a slurry, mud. Add more water, okay? Keep adding water until you're going to get a very thick fluid. 
Okay, now, if you're putting this into a backpack, you might just have enough. You, you put your pound in the bottom or whatnot, and then you, you fill it up to fluid, and you pour it into your backpack. That's great. Um, if you're filling a bigger tank, you're going to want to have water in the tank. We typically say you're going to have it half filled with water, and you, you, you start putting your sprays into it. And then um, start adding the neem in slowly, but let the agitator, you must have the agitator running. And this is for the backpack people. If you have a backpack and you're spraying neem, you got to keep moving. You need to have dance tunes on. I'm not kidding. And you need to keep moving. You have to keep the suspension agitated. Okay? You got to keep it agitated so that while you're spraying, it's not settling. So, and then, of course, you really want to thoroughly rinse out your equipment. And when you're done, yeah, replace the filters. Put the filter back in. So, when you mix it, remember, add fluid to flour. And do it slowly. Don't rush it. If you've ever made hot chocolate mix, you're making hot chocolate mix. And if you dump the powder on the milk, you didn't read the instructions. I'm just saying. You put the milk and you slowly mix it into the chocolate and stir it, stir it, stir it, stir it, and then you get the hot chocolate. All right, the next question was, what kind of coverage do I get? Um, well, can you mix it? What other products can you mix in it? And I did mention, don't put in oils. That would be neem, but you could put in serenade. Yeah, you can put in fish. Um, but I would really kind of recommend putting on, uh, if you're going to apply, you want to put on oil, and then you want to put on um, surround, Put the oil on first, let the tree dry, and then apply the surround. Let it stick to the oil, but it won't contaminate the surround and cause it to lose its efficacy. Um, that's my, kind of my best option for you. Uh, how many weeks of coverage do I average? Two weeks. Uh, wind doesn't take it off so much. Sun doesn't take it off. Rain takes it off. So it, it, it does weather. It does weather. Um, best part at the time of year I really kind of like it is in the really dog days of summer those really hot days and the aphids are out or the aphids don't like it and when you have new growth in your trees or tree with surround the new growth sticks out like a sore thumb you get bright green coming out of the mud men of Mars and it's very easy to walk around and do surveillance um, but timing is really important that you want to apply it when you need it. Okay, so putting on right after petal fall, I don't have a whole lot of leaves on my trees yet. I'm content to wait until my IPM traps or my degree day count tells me I have an emerging threat. Be it plum cuculeo, codling moth, or Japanese beetle, which would be the three reasons I wouldn't use it much. Um, I would wait to apply it proactively for them, but I wouldn't just start. Um, because when you spray, a good lion's share of sprays you apply hit the dirt. They don't hit the tree, if you don't have leaves on especially. And even when you spray surround, you'll notice that it looks like it snowed in your orchard. Not only are the trees white, the ground's going to be white. Because you just miss. It happens. It just falls to the ground. So time it to why are you applying it at that time. Certainly the people who make surround don't stand to lose anything if they tell you to apply it early because you certainly are getting a longer period of protection and you'll use more product. And I'm sorry, surround has gotten more expensive, especially because of shipping charges. Um, it's not as affordable a solution as it used to be, um, but it is a good solution. It's also good as a protectant from um, sun scalding. Uh, that, that was something that came out of um, down under in the southern hemisphere. Um, it protected the fruit and the trees while not affecting photosynthesis, so that's kind of cool. He also had a question about EM1. It was sort of a... Um, a non-question about EM1. And uh, I bought it. I don't use it. It has a shelf life. The one thing I will tell you about these kinds of products, same especially applies to fish, their shelf 
stable while they're concentrated because the pH is what it is. Once you start diluting it, there's a clock on it. So yes, you can expand EM1, but there's a clock on it. And then eventually it will start to spoil. So if, you've, if it's past shelf life, um, like let's say you got it for April, you know, if it's going to expire in April of this year, well, come April, yeah, expand it and start doing your application, but definitely use it this season, okay? Uh, with fish, never dilute it till you're ready to use it, okay? Fish will also, well, depending on who you get it from, but some fish products will also clog filters. Be aware of that. There's, you know, filters are a good thing, but they're part of the problem when everything's clogged up and you've got a full tank and you've got a filter in there. That's a problem. Be aware of that. Um, also mentioned that they've asked for varieties from the National Germplasm in Geneva. Okay, uh, a couple things about that. One, that is a USDA activity. They are probably no one answering the phone right now. Secondly, not just, you need to be affiliated doing research. Typically, is my understanding, I contacted them, they contacted me. Um, if you want to get germplasm from them. Um, there's, it's a finite resource, there's finite funding, so general end users, lay people, um, it's not intended for them. Um, I do have a video about the National Germplasm, folks. Uh, please watch it and please read the subtext that's underneath it. Um, their website is a fantastic resource, but if you want to get germplasm from them, you're, first of all, you're definitely going to have to wait until after the shutdown. Just, you know, whatever, wait. And then the other thing is you're going to, um, you, you need to be a sanctioned user. Okay, so you may have to um, cozy up to a grower or cozy up to a um, school or something to be able to make that request um, depending on what it is. But I, again, I've heard other people do get cyan from them. So what do I know? I just wanted to make sure you understood that uh, they are USDA activity. They are probably not answering the phone right now. They're probably furloughed, other than keeping projects alive and not letting things die. So I hope I've answered the questions for the reader and for the follower and everybody else. I just thought this would be easier. So um, I re-recorded this because my audio was bad last time. I'm really hoping that my audio feed is better this time. So I'm wishing you all a good new year, and um, do ask questions. I'm going to try and answer them like this from now on. Take care. Bye-bye.